Welcome Casino Assembly of God and all, all of you that are joining us here on this video recording. Um, Chris and I are here at the uh, church on Thursday night, 11, uh, November 5th, uh, doing this recording. And uh, as of right now, we, uh, the elections are still up in the air, uh, but not to worry uh, because God is in charge. Amen. Uh, to that and just a few announcements uh, for what's going to be taking place um, the next couple weeks we have canceled church uh, uh, November 4th through November 11th so Wednesday Sunday morning Sunday night uh, Wednesday night are uh, definitely canceled uh, but uh, on Thursday uh, the 12th November 12th there, there is a scheduled board meeting that we will discuss uh, the how we're going to go forward uh, with this because of the quarantine the, of the COVID stuff uh, hitting a number of our families be in prayer for our, this body but also this area that uh, it's it's just been on an increase uh, but praise the Lord that um, uh, people are able to uh, get through it uh, quite well um, by the grace of God. But again, November 12th, there will be a board meeting, uh, and I'll, I'll be talking to the men about that. Uh, make note of November 15th, uh, Christmas shoe boxes are due, um, and we do have scheduled right now Carl and Sarah Pashi, uh, uh, missionaries uh, that, uh, that were invited a while back to be a part. Um, just pay attention to the website, to uh, Facebook, to the different social media outlets. If in question, if in, uh, if wondering, just give me give us a call here at church. Um, but uh, we do have missionaries coming in on the 15th, uh, the same day as the Christmas shoe boxes that are due. Um, uh, and, and we do intend to get back to the meeting on a regular basis. Uh, November 18th would be Wednesday with the regular uh, meetings going on. Youth pie auction. We are planning to do that on November 22nd after the church service for Speed the Light, uh, the annual youth pie auction for uh, Speed the Light. Uh, November 25th, we're planning on doing a casino Thanksgiving and testimony service again where uh, this body is at, where uh, this community is at with uh, uh, the, the COVID issue. Um, we may, may be making changes, but my heart, my desire is to press on and, and and continue to be able to come together in as much as we can. Um, one last uh, announcement, unless Chris tells me that there's another one that I ought to do. Um, we do have a live nativity coming up December 9th and 10th. We do plan on having a uh, in informational meeting, uh, organizational meeting, uh, so pay attention to that um, uh, so that we would be able to do that ministry as well. Uh, we are going to do our best not to allow, not to allow anything to hold us back from doing ministry or ministering to one another. So thank you so much again for being a part of this uh, uh, video, uh, watching it. May you be blessed uh, with God's word and encouraged uh, as, as uh, being a part of the body of Christ, not just casino assembly of God, but the body of Christ. Uh, if we claim to have Christ in us, then whoever claims that as well is also our brother and sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, thank you so much for being a part uh, of this video. Hey, let's get into God's Word. We'll be in Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20. So if you grow, grab your Bibles, go grab that cup of coffee. Uh, and as we look at Psalm chapter 20 this morning together, um, we are going to, going to enjoy uh, the Word of God. Uh, we apologize for uh, uh, not having music, live music for us this morning. Uh, but again, with the way COVID has, has struck the area, uh, we had to make some adjustments. But we needed and we desired to get the Word of God into our hearts and our minds. As you are turning to Psalm chapter 20, Psalm chapter 20, let me pray one more time. Father, we praise you and adore you. We thank you for your goodness and mercies. Oh, Father in heaven. Lord, we thank you for the technology that we are able to do these kind of things. 
get the word out. Let it be an encouragement and a, and a sharpening to each heart that sees and, and hears uh, what is being declared from your word. Uh, Father, in these times that we live, you are our stronghold. You are that refuge. You are that protection. You are that encouragement uh, in our hearts and our lives that uh, in Christ Jesus, uh, with Jesus living inside of us, we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry. And, and so, Lord, just praise you. We thank you, your beauty, your majesty. Um, Father, you are good. You are very good. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. And as we look to it now, capture our hearts, capture our imaginations. Lord, let us not be distracted, but hear what your spirit would have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. Uh, I'd like to read that. I'll read it completely, and then we're going to go back, basically, verse by verse. Psalm chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob uh, defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call. As we look into this chapter uh, this morning, um, we're living in days of anticipation of a conclusion to an election uh, that, some, that is somewhat driving some of us crazy. Um, how, did this, uh, how did our nation come to this? Um, we're anticipating what direction our country is going to be going in in these next months, years ahead of us. We're in we are in the days of hope and frustration with the leaders that have uh, been set up before us. We're, we're in the days of quarantine and fears of, of illnesses uh, that may come upon us. We're in the days of, of uh, interrupted work and interrupted living, uh, the living out of our lives. But as we look at this psalm, and, and many of the psalms, probably, we could probably argue every psalm, uh, declares, you know, there is trouble in this world. Jesus told us that in this world you will have trouble, but I will give you peace. And, and David understood that, and in, in this is accredited to him, and, and in the writing of this, um, and looking at it, 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 it appears to be somewhat of a, a battle prayer. They're, they're getting ready to go into battle, and, and David's making this prayer. It's a, uh, could possibly be a battle uh, pep talk to his troops, being able to speak life into their lives and encouragement. Uh, and, and as we go through this, I, I hope that, that you find the hope and the encouragement uh, that, that David is, is trying to get across to his men, that God's trying to get across to our hearts. That, that we will live and live victoriously in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So verse, uh, verse 1, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. God is our protection. In Christ Jesus, we have this protection. We have this hope. We have this uh, uh, confidence that no matter what comes what our way, in those things that I, I, I addressed well, just a little bit ago, in the, the days that we live in, the things that are coming against us, we can have confidence that God is our protection. In Christ Jesus, He is protecting us, He is sustaining us, He is empowering us. Verse 2, may He send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. God is found in worship. You look at the word sanctuary, you look at Zion, these are the holy places of God. These are the places where God calls us to. Zion in the, in, the, in the Jewish mindset, that's the ultimate 
place to worship. The sanctuary is the place to go and worship uh, the one true God. But in our hearts, in Christ Jesus, we are able to worship and glorify him anywhere we go. And in worship, when we come after God, when we come after God, he is true to be found. He shows himself to us in Christ Jesus. Verse 3, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. God is honored with our giving ourselves to him, of ourselves acknowledging him in all things, and that in him and through him, because of his sacrifice for us in Christ Jesus, we can find, we can know that, that he will remember us. He knows us. Verse 4, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purposes. God honors the heart that desires him first. If you see in there, may he grant you according. This is a, a, kind of that prayer pep talk that, that David is bringing to his men and, and, and even to his own heart saying, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. God looks for us to align our hearts, our desires, our purpose, according to his will, according to his purpose. His purpose, his will is perfect. And, and in that we can have confidence and joy in uh, uh, worshiping and serving him. Verse 5, we will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. In that God's victory is our victory. In God we have victory. And as we look at this, um, we see in, in that verse 5, we rejoice in your salvation. That's our ultimate victory. It's not... Uh, uh, it, it's not just in the here and now, but ultimately it's the salvation of eternal life, living in the presence of God forever. But in, our, in the life that we live now, yes, we do have victories. We do. He does save us from situations, and we rejoice in that. But we rejoice in God's salvation for us. We set up our banners. Our lives are His banners that bring Him honor and glory. A banner in the uh, military would go before people, uh, before the troops, to show uh, uh, where the battle's at and, and, and what we're fighting for. And, and God is our banner, and with Christ Jesus in us, we raise up our lives to bring Him glory and honor. In, the, in verse 6, it talks about the Lord saves his anointed. And, and this is in particular about David. Uh, David was the anointed king uh, of Israel at that time. We know he anointed Jesus Christ as the king of kings and lord of lords. And he and, and Father God answered uh, David from holy heaven uh, with saving strength of his right hand, protecting David through situations. God's hand was upon Jesus as he walked this earth. And today we know that Jesus sits at the right hand of our Heavenly Father, waiting to come in the clouds and call the church home. We anticipate that. The anointed King of Kings, the anointed Lord of Lords, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Verse 7 and 8, uh, these are the these are two of the verses that, that really drew me, that God drew me to, I, I felt, for this week because of the uh, day and the craziness of, of what we live in. Um, some trust in chariots, some in horses. If you think about that, some trust in chariots. Some people trust in the man-made objects that, that were created by the hands of man, given the wisdom by God, the knowledge to do it, but yet... We place our trust in those things to save, to protect, to guide and lead us through life. And they're empty. They're empty. Some, some in horses. People look at, at the natural. People look at the, the things of this earth and think, wow, you know, if, if uh, uh, we, we worship this or if we honor uh, these natural things, um, they will save us and protect us. We put our hope 
uh, that this earth uh, with climate change going on, uh, so-called climate change going on, that, that this earth is going to protect us. Um, there's a radio show, uh, I think it's still going on, but uh, in it, it says, the earth is not your mother. The earth is not your protector. The earth was placed here uh, for our enjoyment and for us to take care of it. But we don't trust in chariots. We don't trust in horses. That last half, but we remember, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That is what we put our trust in. That is where our hope is found. In that alone, there is nothing besides the name of the Lord our God. And in there, it is Yahweh, the Lord, our God, Elohim, which is the, the self-existent, sovereign God, who was and is and is to come. That's who we look to. We don't look to a president. We don't look to a Senate or a House of Representatives. We don't look to a governor. We don't look uh, to, to the, the possessions we have to make us happy, to get us through the day. We look to our Heavenly Father that we are, have been able to come to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 8, it says, they have bowed down and fallen. This is, that's talking about the people who put their trust in these things. They fall down before these. They have fallen. They've stumbled. They've, they've put their trust in the wrong things. And David is saying, put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Last part of 8, but we have risen and st stand upright. The people that place their heart, place their hope, place their confidence in God the Father in heaven, in Christ Jesus, are sure not to stumble, not to struggle, uh, excuse me, not to fall. Christ will help us through the obstacles. God, Christ will help us through uh, the, the struggles, the trials, the tribulations that, we, uh, that are set before us. God protects us and takes us through it all. In the final verse, save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call. That desperate cry of heart of every human heart that cries out, Lord, save me. Save me from the wickedness. Save me from the wickedness coming against me. Save me from my own sin. Save me from the death that sin is going to bring. And the last part of that, it says, may the king answer us when, answer us when we call. The king does answer. The king does, does answer. A number of times in Scripture it says, He who calls upon the Lord will be saved. Our effort, our call is to call upon the Lord. He's true, He's faithful, He's just, and He will save. The heart that bends before the Heavenly Father, the heart that bends their knee before God, and say, God, I need you, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to be right with you. And he does that through his son, Jesus Christ, who the Father sent to the cross, to the grave, and ascended into heaven that, that all who call upon the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, the King of kings, will be saved. My hope, my desire is that, that as, as we continue in the weeks and months ahead of us, in this nation of up, up, uh, uproar and chaos, seeming chaos, it's not a shock to God. It's falling into place right where God needs it to be so we can trust Him. But as we go forward, put and keep and maintain your heart before God, saying, God, our hope is in you. It's not in man. It's not in uh, the, the man-made uh, uh, laws or, or governments. It's in you. You, have, you are sovereign over all things. If you, you, if you are making your decision for Jesus right now, I encourage you to call the church, to, to contact somebody here at Casino Assembly of God, or if, if you know somebody is a Christian, you go talk to them and let them know that you gave your heart to Jesus. They want to know, we want to know, that we can walk alongside of you and see you mature, see you grow 
in Christ Jesus. And that God can work in you the same way He's working in each and every one of us. That call upon Him, follow after Him, and honor Him. Let us pray. Father, I pray for the heart right now that is making that decision. Lord, let it settle strongly in their heart. And, and Father, bring to them, cause them to contact, make contact with a, a fellow believer. Now a brother or sister because of you. Be with them. Lord, for your church, Lord, that it, it is known and it is made obvious to this world that we trust in you and you alone. We trust your direction of our nation. We trust you in the direction of our lives because, Father, you alone are faithful and true. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen.